I was very angry at the world. I didn't, like I said earlier, I didn't want to listen to anybody. I didn't want to, you know, be a part of anything. Lorenzo had come from a life where trust was hard, hard to get. Um, never really seen anybody. There was people that came in his life, people that came out of his life. He knows what it means to be beaten down. He knows what it means to be rejected. What would our life look like if we didn't have our families? What would it look like if we didn't have our mom or dad or support group of siblings to go to? I remember um, having a practice going on and, and there was a, a time going on where Lorenzo tackled with his head down, the ambulance came in. I, I caught a, a muscle spasm from my neck down to, to my lower back and I couldn't really move so they put me in the hospital. As I walked into the room, Lorenzo lay on the bed and, and I said, man, is everything all right? And he said, yeah, I think, I think I'm think i gonna be okay. And I said, is there anybody that I can call? You know, can I, can I call a family member or somebody and let them know that you're gonna be okay? And he said, um, Chris, I have no one that you can call in my life. I told him no, there wasn't anybody in that, that I was on my own pretty much and you guys were the only ones that I, you know, that I would contact if I got hurt or anything. I remember um, looking on the table and there was a, just a, a post-it note. And I remember reaching down and grabbing a pen and writing my name down on this post-it note. I remember sticking it down um, on the Bible at the time, putting it down on the Bible. And he, I said, um, we have somebody that you can call now. I realized that, you know, now that the coaches and now that Chris Morgan really care about me, it's, I mean, I'm not here alone. I'm not here by myself and that if I really need some help, I know where to go get it. I stayed in the East Atlanta area, so there was a lot of hood drugs and, you know, probably like prostitution around everywhere. Life wasn't very good for him at first. My parents, you know, um, I, I haven't seen my dad since the age of two, um, it's when I was in California. Um, my, my mom, she, uh, she sold drugs, you know, for a living to, you know, bring money to the table or whatever. She was never home, you know, it was just me my, and my four other siblings, so we had to fend for ourselves. So not only is he big brother, he's actually dad, he's actually mom, he's telling his young brothers and sisters what to eat, when to eat, put him in bed. It's a huge responsibility. So this young man, I'm sure at a young age, said, if I'm gonna get out, how? At the age of 10, um, I really just, you know, just stepped up and said, you know what, I'm gonna help out as much as I can. My sister, she would go, go out and, you know, do whatever she did to get cash. And um, I would take out trash, you know, go around the neighborhood asking people to take out their trash to get, like, as much money as I could. He, he, he went through a lot up here. <laughs> Me and my siblings were in school, and uh, next thing we know that we have uh, police officers knocking on the classroom doors, asking to, you know, grab us out of class and take us to a, uh, a, a resource facility. And, um, you know, the, the, the process of that was scary. You know, we didn't, we didn't really know what was going on. We thought we, were, we thought we were doing something wrong, but um, we were told that our mom was locked up again and that, uh, that they needed to go through the whole process again. Lorenzo, uh, unfortunately, was a kid that was involved in a family that had a Child Protective Service report. That CPS report turned into an investigation by the local DFAX office. Um, that report was for neglect and maltreatment. That what then led to that child, Lorenzo, and his siblings being removed from the home. It's very difficult to live in a group home setting, and they, um, it was all teenage boys. A lot of times in the foster system, the numbers you see are, are younger kids. So younger kids don't move around as much. When you begin seeing the teenage kids who come in as 12, 13, 14 year olds, who really are bigger, more autonomous, have more to say, let's, let, let's mention it that way, um, then in fact, they're a little more harder to manage and people don't want to manage them. 
might have had some anger in him at the time when he first got there because when all children come, they always saying, well, nobody's gonna tell me what to do. You know, that man tell me, you're not my family. We were all firecrackers. We didn't want to listen to anybody. We were just, we was just, every time someone got us upset, we would, you know, we would just go off. And we seen that our mom does that. And, you know, I seen that and I was like, yeah, you know what, I see where my mom is ending up and I'm not, I don't want to end up where she is now. So it was, it was a, it was a challenge, but I got over it. He was bounced around a lot of uh, homes, um, separate from his uh, siblings, but he always was the one that you could tell he was gonna get through it. The only thing that saved me from like really just, just like giving up was football. I think Lorenzo knew that Football was probably was gonna be his ticket out of here. He missed out on a lot of things that maybe a lot of athletes don't get a chance to see. You play a football game and you walk out, even in high school, you walk out and, and mom and dad are normally waiting. Lorenzo Martin's a young athlete that after the game's over, he sits in the locker room and waits for everybody to disperse because he wants to go out to an empty parking lot because there's nobody there to see him. It, it was overwhelming for me. Um, I had family to worry about. I was in a group home, so I was away from them. Um, and I had football to worry about in class. It, it, like I said, it was overwhelming. I couldn't really like deal with it, but then I had to realize that I had to deal with it because it was gonna get me where I needed to be in life. The statistics bear out that you're as likely to become a professional athlete as you are to graduate college as a former foster care child. That's what you got to fight for. That's what you got to fight for. Living there and then you can go on to college and get your college degree and go on to, and be somebody and do something in life. My brothers and sisters are my inspiration because, I mean, if I gave up, I, would, I wouldn't want to see the, f the faces that they would give me if I told them that, you know, I, I, I couldn't do it anymore. He wanted to be a survivor. He did not want to be a statistic. He wanted to be someone that, that Pete, young men and women could look up to and say, look, if I made it out, you can make it out. I believe I was one of the first guys to commit to South Carolina in my class, but then the day before actual signing day, they told me that I wasn't gonna be able to sign a letter of intent because of what my grades was like. Unfortunately, at the end of the, that path, they had overextended their offers and had to make a cut. Uh, Lorenzo still had some academic work to do to qualify, and so their decision was, we're not gonna sign him for this particular incoming class. I felt like all of my anger that I had, had you know, uh, built it up to that point, it just, I just wanted to release it all, but I couldn't because, you know, I had family, friends, and, you know, I just put a smile on my face and, you know, just, just hit all, the, all of my emotions behind that smile. It was a challenge for Lorenzo. It would be for any of us to have, you know, to expect one thing and then kind of have the rug pulled out from under you a little bit. But again, one of the incredible things about Lorenzo is his ability to adapt and adjust and get right back up and, and you know, get back in the fight. I was on my way down to Troy University and uh, I get a phone call um, on my phone and it's Coach Charlie Strong on the, on the phone and he's saying that, uh, Malden, uh, we heard about you being the face over signing and everything and we want you to come down to the University of Louisville and see what we're about. Like it's, it's a family environment. You got family, you got friends, you got, uh, you got people that you can depend on. The ability for, for Lorenzo to find family wherever he goes is amazing. 
After telling my story once or twice, I started getting emails, I started getting, you know, uh, messages, DMs from on social websites from all the fans and everything, and I started to realize, like, these people actually really care about me. It's like you got two families, here in Georgia, here up in, in Louisville. Just looking in the stands and seeing all these people in the stands cheering for you and your team, it feels good. You wouldn't, I wouldn't think that, you know, I'd be here uh, from where I came from. Underneath that hard shell, that tough, angry shell, is just a little boy that just wants to be loved. And, and as I've watched him grow from that moment, which was a freshman, to now where he's at now, um, that is an incredible transformation. He doesn't want to go back to that lifestyle. He doesn't want to go back to the streets. He doesn't want to go to an empty home. He wants to be the best where he can use his platform to help others that grew up in the same situation as him. Being able to, you know, just tell my story is, is, is a blessing because there are other children out there that, have, that, are, that are going through what I am, that I went through, but I just want them to realize that, you know, this that isn't the end. And there's always a, uh, another door to be open and open that door and you can be blessed just as I did.